Good morning, friends. How is your week? It's really getting cold and I hope we're all keeping warm. How's the quiz last week? Today, we're going to be learning about giving. If you're ready, I am and our teachers are too. It's the least I can do. You made it all for me. Now I am free to live with you. You gave it all for me. I gave my all for you, Jesus. You gave it all for me. I gave my all for you, Jesus. Born to die, raised to life. This is the worst you made for me. It's the least I can do You gave it all for me Now I'm free to live for you Come to it, you gave it all for me I gave my love to you, Jesus You gave it all for me I gave my love to you Atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing. For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your Hey there, children. Fun fact. Did you know that you get as much joy giving as a person who's receiving? Yes, it's scientifically proven. Scientists state that serotonin levels, which is the hormone that makes you happy, is just as high for you as it is for the person who has received from you. That is why, probably why God has an opinion because he created the heavens and the earth as well as the scientists. He says it is more blessed to give than to receive. So that's what we are going to be talking about this morning, giving. Good morning and I hope you had a wonderful week. Before we go into the nuggets for today, let's say a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for an opportunity to come to your presence. We thank you for keeping us safe through a pandemic. We thank you for all the little things you do for us that we take for granted. We say thank you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so now let's get into it proper. Let's talk about giving. What is giving? That's a good point to start. Giving is the act of providing something for someone. It's a way of reaching out without expecting anything in return, i.e. meeting someone's need just because. I say just because 
and I end it there because you're not expecting anything. There's no nothing after. You just want to give to add joy to a person's life. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 37. It's a very long, long read. So I'm just going to tell us a story. I know we like stories. Okay, this story involves Elisha, who's a prophet of God, Gehazi, his servant, and a woman from Shunem. So Elisha goes into Shunem frequently. And then this well-to-do woman takes it upon herself to host him, give him bed and board. By that, I mean feed him and give him a place to lay his head in on anytime he comes into Shunem. So she prepares a room for him. So whenever he comes into Shunem, he just goes into the play, into her house, eats, stays there, he's happy. And then one day he says to his servant Gehazi, this woman has just magnanimously allowed us to live in her house anytime we are in Shunem. What can we do to pay her for her kindness? And then Gehazi says to his master, she has no son and she and her husband are advanced in age. Elisha says, fantastic, we're going to do something. Call her. So she, he calls the Shunammite woman and tells her, this time next year, you'll be holding your child in your hand. And the woman says to him, my Lord, do not raise my hopes. I am old. My husband is even older. How do you want us to have a baby? But true to his word, because he's a servant of God, that same time the next year, the woman has a son. So the son grows, and one day he goes to the field with his father. And she yells, my head, my head. And then the father says, take him to his mother. He goes to the mother and sits on her laps and dies. Now that's a tragedy, right? The woman isn't overtly worried. She just goes out, calls a horse rider, takes the horse and writes to Elisha the prophet. When Elisha sees her coming, he tells his servant Gehazi, oh, that's our benefactor, bring her in. When she gets into the house, she says to Elisha, you raised my hopes. I was quite fine without a child. Now I have a son and he's dead. Elisha says, do not worry. I have got you. And he says to his servant, take my staff, lay it on the child, you will come back to life. The servant takes Elisha's staff, lays it on the child, but the child does not come back to life. So Elisha and the woman goes back to her house. Elisha gets in the house, gets on top of the child, but the child still does not come back to life. So he walks around the room and lays on the child a second time. And this time, voila, the child comes back to life. The woman falls on her face and says, thank you, Elisha, for giving me back my child. What did you learn from that story? I'll tell you what I learned. I learned that be giving actually helps you stop goodness. It is more beneficial to you than to the person you've given up to. Let me explain. The woman first and foremost gave her home, opened her home up to Elisha and Gehazi, made them comfortable at no cost to them. That way she stored up an emotional bank accounts where she could pull from when she needed help. So even though all she did was take care of Elisha, one, she gained the son, two, she had her son brought back to her from death. Isn't that big? So the significance of giving is that by helping others, you are actually helping yourself. Yes. So why do we give? Why do I give? And why you should do one because god gave his son do you know how significant it is to give your child to another that's what god did for us that's the most selfless thing anybody can do he gave his son to come and be mistreated on earth and die for us so that we'll have this salvation and this life that we have now how great is that isn't that just awesome Two, because he has commanded it. We are Christians. We believe in God. We trust him. We follow him. So when he commands us to do something, we should do it. Because it increases God's blessings in our life. It brings about abundance. When you give, 
it is given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. That's what the Bible says. Because it meets other people's needs. Remember, you may have what you want, but there are a whole lot of people that do not have what they need. So when we give, we help to meet their needs because it's a source of joy to me and others. Remember how you felt Christmas morning when you opened your Christmas gift, right? It was an awesome feeling. It was really pleasant. How about you be the person that makes someone else feel that way? That's what giving is about. And how should we give? You should give willingly. Nobody should curse you to give. You should want to give. So be willing to give. You should give faithfully. You should give intentionally. Make up your mind. I want to give. I want to be a giver. I want to be a blessing to somebody somehow. You should give cheerfully. You should be happy. It shouldn't be grudging. You shouldn't be saying, ah, oh, no, but this is not even enough. And I need to be like, no, no. You should give from your heart cheerfully. You should give sacrificially. As long as you have what you need, don't wait until you have what you want to give. Give because you already have what you need and someone else does not even have what they need. Don't wait until you have all that you need and all that you want. And give generously. Don't be stingy. God was not stingy when he gave his child. So do not be stingy when you give. You might ask, what can I give? I have nothing. I'm just a child. Everything I have is given to me. Yes, it may be given to you, but you have some things that you can give. Out of that, that little that is given to you, still give. You can give your love. Yes, just love. Doesn't cost you anything. Just be nice to the first, next person. A little smile will go a long way. Just smile to that person just because you can give your time. We're in a pandemic. Nobody's seen anybody now. But you can call somebody and talk for 30 seconds. Just check up on somebody and say, how are you doing? I hope you're good. People are anxious right now. Just show that you care. You can give your words. You can encourage somebody. You can help somebody. You can be the calm in somebody's storm. That's a way of giving. You can give your strength. You can give through your deeds. That's, this is really simple. You can just help your little brother do his homework. You can help your dad clear the driveway. You can help your mom do the cooking. You can even help by just doing something somebody would normally help you do just to take the pressure off that person. Then you can give material things. It could be money. It could be your clothes. It could be your shoes. It could be toys. It's really cold out there and some people may not have jackets or have winter boots and you have more than you really want. You could give it out. That's a way of giving. You would say, oh, I'm too little. I can't give. Nope, you are not too little. Everyone, old and young, can give and has something to give. Because giving is done consciously and actively. God has given to us freely. So why should we not give? And then think of the joy it brings. Be that drop of joy in someone's heart today. Trust me, it's the best feeling ever. It is very, very satisfying. I'm telling you, try it. You'll see. God wants you to be a giver so that you can receive abundantly from him. So now we'll go to our memory verse. Our memory verse today is very short and simple. Luke chapter 6 verse 38a. Give and it shall be given unto you. We'll take it again. Luke chapter 6 verse 38a. Give and it shall be given unto you. And for the last time, Luke chapter 6 verse 38a. Give and it shall be given unto you. The second part of that, this particular Bible reading says, it will be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaking together, shall men bring to your bosom. So that's what happens when you give and give selflessly. Now we'll do a little bit of question and answer. 
So I'll give you the questions and then I'll give you time to think about the answers. What is giving? Who can give? How should we give? What did we take away from the lesson today? And then what is our memory verse? So let me give you time. Two, three, one, go. So here are your answers. Giving is the act of providing something for someone. Very simple. Everyone can give, old, young, and everyone in between. Everyone can give. And how should we give? We should give willingly. We should give cheerfully. We should give intentionally. We should give faithfully. And then we should give sacrificially and generously. Very important. So what did I learn today? I'll tell you. I learned that giving benefits me much more than it benefits the person that I give to because God multiplies all that I give and gives it right back to me. So now let me know what you learned. A memory verse, short and sweet. Luke chapter 6 verse 38a. Give and it shall be given back to you. So, as I leave you this week, I'm going to charge you with a little tax. And I'm going to tell you this. Look around you and identify someone you can apply what you just learned today to. And then come back next week and tell me how you feel. I can't wait to hear it. Have a great week. Stay warm and stay safe. Welcome back, children. What an awesome message about giving. God wants us to be a giver. The more you give, the more you receive. The more we help our parents at home, the more our parents showers us with gifts. So go and be a giver. God bless.